Hey everybody, it's Erin Reed, and we are here to play in this new art journal book. Not my book, this is actually Tina Walker's book, and I have a full flip through of everybody else's uh, art that is in here. And the whole theme behind this book is blue. So that's kind of fun. So I am going to play with some amazing stencils I got in from the Crafters Workshop. We have four stencils we are gonna kind of dabble with. I'm not sure if I'm gonna use them all, but I pulled them out just to be safe. Um, we have a couple, a series from Gabriel Polacco. This one is the Wonderlust and this one is the Riveted. And the Riveted, I actually have it in two different sizes. I have large and I have a small, which is kind of fun, which means you can get some different textures, even though it's the exact same stencil because they're larger or smaller. And then I also pulled out the Balazar Design 6x6 and the Lacy Tiles. Now, I do not want to go directly into her book because this is getting shipped and I don't want to mess it up. So what I pulled out is I pulled out a sheet of watercolor paper and what I'm going to do, and it definitely fits, see, is I'm going to do all my work on this and then just cut it down the middle and then pull it apart and I'm just going to glue it down into the book. That way I don't get missed because I'm going to be misting. I'm going to get messy and I don't want to mess up her book and this fits just fine. So this is a good quality premium watercolor paper. I'm going to move her book off to the side. Again, there is a flip through in detailed pictures of everybody. And this book has made its rounds for the past couple of years. And there's some really pretty designs in there. So first step is I'm going to start with my watercolor paper and my large stencil. So since this is a 12 by 12 and my sheet is 11 and a half going this way, and obviously it fits this direction, I'm just going to lay this on top. I'm going to center it right here in the middle. And I have this amazing shimmery goodness. It's a dries clear iridescent, adds shimmer to ordinary painter gel. I'm using it just as a base to begin with. We're going to add some, we're going to use this only as a medium throughout the entire project. Sometimes it's fun just dealing with one and not playing with it. But look, look at that shimmer. So it's going to have this kind of translucent shimmery, even though we're going to add color on top of it, it'll be fine. So I have just a palette brush and I'm going to come in and just add this all over. And I'm not worried about if I go over the edges. I just want to make sure I get all those little nooks and crannies, all those lines, all those little holes of the rivets all through here. Now, when you're doing stencil work, you want to make sure that you don't leave pools. So I'm really going through with my palette knife and this is just like the silicone palette. It's not, it's very flexible. So I can really get in here and get off all the excess. Number one, because I don't want to waste it. I mean, look how much I'm pulling off. I don't want to waste it. And two, it'll help it dry faster and it's getting into all the nooks and crannies. I'm not worried about that. What I'm doing is I'm pulling it off of the actual plastic, like this section right here. Why does this need to have you know, stuff on it. It doesn't. It's just, it's being wasted and it's going to go into my sink when I wash off my stencil. All right. So there's that. Pull this off, grab a corner and look at that. Look at all that beautiful stencil work. You can just see it there. This is needs to heat set and dry. All right, so I heat set it and I don't mind if it blisters and bubbles and does all those things, but it is now set and dry. So I'm gonna take my little stencil and I'm gonna go through and hit like this corner and here. I'm not worried about hitting every single section. I might do it in two batches. Like I might come here, I might come here and then heat set it. And then I'll come back and I'll do here and I'll do there and then heat set it. That way it doesn't mess everything up. I really love that riveted look and get layer upon layer upon layer. It's completely dry and I've put a layer of paper towels underneath because I am going to start misting. So the theme behind this journal is blue. So all the colors I picked out are blue with the exception of a couple. I did pick out a black and a white. Those are my one exception. So I've got all these fun different types of mist. I've got a bunch of glimmer mist, then I have one chalkboard and chalkboard basically adds a layer of kind of like chalk with the mists. The glimmer mist is what it says. It's mist with a hint of glitter and you can see it all the way in the bottom there. I am going to do one little thing. I have all these little bearing balls that I got from Brutus Monroe and they're perfect to put inside of your um, 
your mist because it creates that friction. So when you shake your mist, you can hear that little ball going back and forth. And what it's doing is it's rolling around all where the mist is and helps kind of break it up. So I don't have to shake, 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 shake so much. It really helps kind of pull all that mist and yumminess in there. So I'm going to go ahead and drop one of these balls into all of them. Make sure some of them I've done. So I'm just going to check to make sure I don't have any in there. All right, I'm going to start off with some of the darker colors, which I think are these two. Basically what I'm going to do, shake it up. And when I shake them, I shake them from side to side. Really make sure I shake it up well. And I'm just going to spray. I really don't have any set plan besides get some color on there. Color, come in, make sure I'm not spraying myself. Come in and do some more spray. We're going to do a series of layers. I'm going to come in with another color now and just keep on spraying. And I'm going to show you something fun here that we're going to do in a minute. For this one, I'm actually going to do some pouring technique. So I'm going to put a blob up here. And because this is watercolor paper, it's really going to absorb. I just want texture and dimension. I'm just going to put it in a few spots. If it rolls around and gets somewhere, if it mixes as I'm spraying, that's kind of what I want to do. Keep on spraying a few more. I love the fact this one's kind of doing its thing. I might force it to do some more. So many ways you can play with this. I have water and I am going to spray, really spray. I need to add more water. This whole thing with water and I'm gonna make this whole thing move. I think I need to add a little bit more color, especially up here. I need to add more water to my water bottle. I'm almost out, I'm having a hard time. So I'm gonna spray some more up here. Let me get some more of those fun colors. Really layer it up. Don't be afraid to get in there with your colors and have fun. So now I have my water. I'm gonna come in and notice how that green is starting to pull in with the other colors. I'm gonna add some more. This is a lighter color now. So you can really see it moving. This is a watercolor paper and this is why I put paper towel. Everything can move, everything can have its dimension, have its color. Now really get it to start doing its thing. Let it drip. I'm just holding it and letting it do its thing. See all the different colors and textures that are happening right now. And it's not completely seeped through. If I did this on regular cardstock, I think I would have more of a problem, but because it's not cardstock, it's actually a watercolor paper. I'm good. Need some more color over here. And notice you can really see my pattern. The shimmers below this shimmery goodness really kind of almost acted like a resist to the whole thing so you can see it doing its thing which is cool it's absorbing some of the color but resisting some of the color it's having lots of fun with it so it's just lots of layers of colors get it going there's no there I feel like i got my limit here now the last thing is you can go in and you can also pat dry you can flip and see what else you got going. You can also see where I made some of the boo-boos. That's okay. Come in where I kind of messed up my corners. And this is where I'm going to come in with my white. Actually, I want to make it a little darker first before I come in with my white. And every time you do something, you kind of change the feel of it. So I'm going to come in with my white flip, flick. I'm going to get some flickering action happening here with this one. And because it's still nice and wet, it's doing this kind of starburst effect to it. I also want to do the same thing with my black. I don't want to spray black because I don't want to really change what this is. So I'm just going to flick some of the black as well and get some good texture going on with that one. There, that's looking pretty good. Add a little bit more. I have a couple layers and then I just want to let the whole thing dry. There we go. Now you can easily go in with your dryer and dry it. 
And when you do that, it's going to move it, which is okay. It depends on what you want. If you want it to look exactly like this, you have to step away from it and let it air dry. If you don't mind having it change and move and do its thing, then go for some air drying. I'm going to step away from mine for just a little bit and then probably come in and do some drying with it. So dry time. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with a stamp that I actually helped create. So this is a stamp set that I created uh, with a company called Renia, which is known for their foiled paper, but we created with a couple of different stamps. And this one specifically actually in a German script from a postcard from the owner's grandmother. And so I took the script and I morphed it and blew it up and made it into a fun script. So I'm just going to come in with a little bit of just black ink and I'm going to just go in and stamp in some places, just kind of catching just a little bit of something here and there. So I'm just going to do a few little spots in here with the stamp. One of the things I want to tell you why I made a stamp actually this size is if you're doing cards, let's say you're going to do A2 size cards, but you want to have your script going horizontally, this would fit on an A2 size card. But let's say you wanted to do a vertical card where you still want the script to go the right way instead of having to take, let's say your stamp was short, you'd have to flip it around. You can still stamp vertically and get the same amount of coverage. That's why I made this just a little bit bigger with a script just to fit for anybody who did want to use it for card making, but it works great with mixed media stuff too. All right, it's still not 100% dry. I mean, it's damp. I'm not, I'm getting a little bit on my hands, but it's good to go for the next step. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my jar now and I'm gonna use the lid and I'm gonna trace. So I'm just gonna use a pencil and I'm gonna lightly trace out just a few circles. Right now I have one, two, three, four. Oops, I didn't do a very good job. Tracing. <laughs> I stuck at the tracing. Put this back on here and really trace this out better. So it's got a total of seven. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take a small brush, go in with my stuff, and I'm gonna fill in everywhere but the circles. So I'm just going to take my shimmery goodness and paint everywhere but. So I'm going to go around the outside. So really come in. And it's going to create kind of a, an effect that the circle is kind of being popped out. Go heavy right next to and then fade as you get further away. Kind of go lighter. So all of this is going to get covered up. Not super dark. Again, the darkest is just right around the circle. So I'm gonna go around and fill all this in.
All right, so now I've gone through on all of my circles, and you can see they're really outlined. Some of them are a little better than others. And this is where I said the pencil lines don't matter because anything that was outside of the circle has just gotten lost within the shimmery goodness. And so it's given that whole kind of ethereal look that's going on right now. It makes it look like these circles are kind of popping off the page a bit. And we are going to outline them also in black, so that's going to help a little bit too. All right, next step is we are going to take this really cool stencil here. This one's called Wonderlust. After I dry this, I forgot about that step. Need to dry this. <laughs> so I have two different stencils that I want to use. One is this adventure, and I want to have it kind of pulling off. I love the circle idea with the circles. I'm trying to decide it's going to get cut. I'm going to go ahead and put a fold in here. So I want to know where I'm actually getting cut because I don't want the, this stencil. Up to this point, I didn't care what went where or if I got folded, but I'm going to give myself the crease. So now I can see where the crease is, and I love that some of these circles are a little bit off. It's not a permanent crease, it's just to kind of see. So the adventure, look, it just fits. It just fits. So I'm going to have that run there, and I love this big one here that I'm going to kind of run off, and it's going to take up some of this empty space right here. And it says Carpe Diem. Actually, I might just leave that Carpe Diem out. I'm not going to use this part, not all that I wonder lost, and I'm not going to do the maps. So I'm going to do this piece and then all of this. Because I've made this all really light right now, I can take a dab of my shimmery goodness, pop it in here, and that is going to be way more than I need. You don't need a lot when you're actually doing, whoa, when you're doing stencils. A little goes a long way, which is pretty fun. Okay, so the next thing is I'm going to take a couple of my really dark colors. I might, no, I don't want to pop any black in there. These are my two darkest. I think I'm going to go with the dark, dark, dark. And I'm going to put some of my mist in here. Now, it's going to lighten up a teeny bit. I'm going to use my brush for this. But not much. It's also going to thin it out just a tiny bit, but again, not that much. I feel like I need to go a little darker. I can go a little darker. See how it lightened up some. So it looks too similar to the color that's on here right now. I'm gonna add a bit more. And again, it is loosening up the shimmery goodness, but it's giving it a beautiful color, which I love. So look at that. This stuff's awesome. So not only do I have the shimmer from the glimmer mist but I, and the color, but I also have the shimmer from the shimmery goodness. Now I want to see, uh, you know what, I'm going to add just a couple. I need to darken it up, but I don't want it to turn black. I want it darker. It's not dark enough. All right, so I actually added quite a bit of black and then I ended up spilling it on here, but you know what? It is what it is. It's a mixed media page. There's no perfection to this. And I am pretty happy. It almost looks like it's kind of a, I don't know. It's, it's just, it's a really cool color. It's a really dark, almost like a sky blue now, but like a stormy sky. So that's pretty fun. All right, I'm gonna reserve this dark color for a minute and I'm gonna come in with my stencil. I actually, and I've just deleted all the section of the video. I tried to do this, but because I added so much paint to this, it's it's bleeding and it's not making a nice crisp, clear image. I'm gonna use a little palette knife and, and just come in, really make sure I've got this pushed down. And there we go little bit of some boo-boos. I'm just going to come in and kind of clean that up. Really can't fix my adventure. Unfortunately, there's kind of a little bit of a raised section, so it's kind of hitting and pulling it up. I'm going to do the same thing with 
this and not all wonder or lost I think is going to get um, messed up I'm going to try and if it does get messed up I'm just going to clean it up so I'm going to come in and this is very detailed so I'll see what I can get out of this guy yeah see the wonder is lost is kind of getting lost that's why I was thinking was going to happen whoops so I am just going to clean that up the beautiful thing about this stuff is it's not dry yet so I can just come in I'm not a big fan of this somehow I got some piece stuck here the rest of it I like it's supposed to have splatters and things I can just remove that part that's fine with me in my little spot and then just blend it in I mean it's already got the stuff all through it and the white pops really nicely but I feel like that looks too off-centered so I'm gonna come in now I'm going to come in and add a couple more spots with this design. I'm going to flip this. Now I got to keep the north north. Add this little one here. I just did this backwards. It's okay. I just realized that. And I'm not looking for it to look perfect. I want it to be kind of messy looking. But it's just adding some more. It's just more layers. Oops. I'm now going to come in with my north just to add a little, I don't want to put the word on there. I just want the bottom of the circle. And that's the cool thing about these is that you can just do bits and pieces of the stencil. You don't have to do the whole thing. See, so it's just a little circle. Too much crap on the edge of my desk. <laughs> and then maybe I just want to add coming in like this. Change up the angles, flip it around, play with it. It's kind of fun. Just adds one, two, three, four, five. Ooh, I need a seventh. Okay. I'm going to come in with a little, just a little star right here. Got to make it odd or it looks weird. All right. So I'm just coming in with a pen real fast. And I'm going to come in and outline my circles. I really should have done this first before I did all the other white stenciling. That's okay. I'm just going to come in, give it a nice, good line. Give some definition to my circle. I'm going to go ahead and do that for all the circles. All right, so there's that. Circles aren't perfect, but they are what they are. Okay, last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in and I, I'm gonna use my little grid again. And I'm not gonna get perfect, but I am gonna add some, but this time I'm gonna go sideways. I'm gonna go a different direction with my other color of my, um, my medium that I created. I'm gonna, I'm running out of space. I need to go clean everything. <laughs> so one of the downfalls to when you get have fun and get messy is that you tend to make messes. <laughs> funny getting messy make messes how fun so I'm just gonna come in here and very lightly take my grid go the other direction super light just something like that just adding so just a little bit of something different just come in, in some very odd areas just my final just little somethings like that the white I'm fine with that too pick up some of that goodness in here Again, come in at a funny angle. I don't want to go into my circles too much. I'm going to go into them a little bit. I need a little bit more here. I think that's all she wrote. I'm going to let this dry and I'm going to go clean up now. All right, so now I'm going to go just go ahead and cut this in half. I'm just double checking the length again. So I'm going to screw that up. So my length is 
just a teeny bit over 11 and a half, which be like five and three quarters is my half. Now I've got my two pieces and I definitely like the way that it's kind of has been cut. And now we get to put it in the blue book. Now I'm going to jump to the back. <laughs> Might as well. Nothing that says I have to go in order with everybody else. So the other thing I like is that because I'm separating it with this banner of white, you know what? I think I'm going to trim off a little bit more. I want to give it a little bit more of an edge. So I'm going to go through and I know I'm going to end up cutting part of my arrow and I'm just fine with that. I'm going to take off a quarter of an inch coming from this side. So I'm going to take off a chunk of this. I'm also going to take off a quarter of an inch off the top. And this side ended up being a little bit bigger for some reason. So I'm going to measure what this one's dimensions are. And I'm going to make that one the same. Now take a look at these fun strips. I could use this for something else. Now that I've done all that fun work because I've pulled it out into strips, you can see kind of how neat it is. Isn't that cool? Hmm. That gave me an idea. Sometimes you just kind of kind of go with a different flow. All right, I'm going to take each one of these. I'm going to cut them into inch and a half strips. I'm actually going to write them in order so I don't forget which ones go where. So inch and a half strips. And on the back side, I'm going to write what number. So this is number one. I'm going to go ahead and go down the line. Now, it went, the first two it came out to be an inch and a half, and then the middle two were an inch and a quarter. So since I'm going to be doing this in order, I'm going to keep that same pattern. So at least it has a little bit of some similarity here. So inch and a quarter, this is number five. So I did all that hard work for no reason, right? <laughs> no, there's a reason. <laughs> All right, now I got them in order. All right, so seven, I gotta put them down in order real fast. To actually help it fit, I'm gonna do all those ones that I cut down to one and a half. Everything is gonna be one and a quarter. There, just gonna, it does something different with it. So I'm gonna come in with this best glue ever. And it's got a nice fine tip so I can really get in here. It's not a super fast drying glue, which is nice because then I can kind of make sure that these are lined in perfectly. So come in. Got lots of glue. Go ahead and put my first one down. Line it up. Get it stuck. Come in with my next one. And I'm going to keep on going down the line with these. All right, so I'm going to go in with that same pen I had earlier, and I am just going to outline all of these guys. And there we go, all done. I thought of playing with some of these little pieces, but it just doesn't look right. I kind of like the way that this just, it is what it is. It doesn't have any really form. It's got the form and structure underneath. You can see where I was going, but then it's just all over the place. There's no like cohesiveness, which I kind of like about it. It's just kind of everywhere. So thanks for stopping by and checking out my cool art journal page for the Tina Walker Blue. Stay tuned for the rest of it because then you get to see all the fun other pages that are in here. And there's some cool pages. Here is one. This one is Jun Mule, and she's been doing this one. And I, if I'm not getting the name right, I'm really sorry. Um, this was done back in 2015, so this book has been going for a little while. I think she kind of pulls it back out and sends it back out. But look how pretty this is. Lots of mixed media. We've got some washi tape. We've got some cutout butterflies here. It looks like a stamp action happening here. Some little chipboard butterflies, and it says, "Your time as a caterpillar has expired. Your wings are ready." And this is fly, 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 and then social butterfly. So she really went with the butterfly theme. Some stenciling action happening here. Lots of blue with some black and some white. So you can do some neutrals in there as well. So that's a really cool one. Here is another one. Now this one is not named, 
but as you can tell, so it's got a very good black background and then she's done a series of, no, I always say this wrong, mandalas, mandalas, my bat. So it says, as my mind can conceive more of good barriers and blocks dissolve, my life becomes full of little miracles popping out of the blue. And I think she handed that. So she wrote that and then did kind of the extra stuff. She's got some, um, looks like some stenciling going on in the background, but then she's got some areas that are darker and some lighter. And I think this is all done with pen, which is really awesome. And obviously this is done with pen as well. Very, very cool. Okay, this one's by Jen Madat. Mana, Sorry if I get it wrong. Done in 2014, so again, a little while. And it looks like somebody else, Hannah, age eight. Ooh, so I don't know if she did this side and she did this side or what the deal is, or if Hannah did this no clue. Um, lots of blue, some streaks coming down. It looks like some puffy clouds with some paste. And then we have some shipboard with some glitter in there. And it looks like it's stamped. If you're feeling blue, try painting yourself a different color. And then there's some little gems and stuff on here. That's fun. So here is another one. And this one is by Dee Dee Catron and it doesn't have a date on here so she is just she's done a couple of pages and then she's glued them in that way she didn't mess up the book so it's some blue paper that she's done a bunch of misting and some cool techniques with maybe some watercolor stuff on there and then she has a whole bunch of die cuts that she kind of layered in on top and then this is from i know the song but i cannot name the band oh duran duran there it is <laughs> anyone anyway, remember right after her name is rio she dances on the sand just like that river twisting through the the dusty land and when she shines she really shows all she can oh rio rio dance across the rio grand so i'm guessing that's what this is this is actually popped up i think it's popped dotted up and i think it's a stamped and embossed image and then die cut and then she's got a couple of filigree pieces here and then she's outlined the whole thing with some pen so i think she'd like a big piece and then just slice it down the middle to fit it in here which is pretty fun All right, so again, this is another one where she did another sheet of paper and then she glued it inside of here, which I think is pretty fun. So it's just blue, I think it's just starting with just like blue paper, like pattern paper. And then we've got some washi tape here and I know where that came from. That actually came from uh, Seven Gypsies. That's a really old washi tape that they have at Seven Gypsies. Lots of some stamps of some butterflies, some stars. She's got some glitter stars in here. She's got some white stars. We've got a stamped and cut out moon. We have a little tag, which is the sun. We have a little um, airplane flying through here and it says sky is the limit. She's got some beads in here. She's got another little banner and then some, another washi tape and a little tag. That one's fun. Oh, and this one says Toonie Da 2014. So it looks like this has made the round in 2014. Middle low sec, reach for the stars. This one's done in 15. Again, another one where they did it on paper and then glued it in. And as you can see, all little stars that are stenciled in here, some stamps, lots of good watercolor action going on. Mist almost looks like she's got starbursts. I can see the way that this is looking. It looks like that's a starburst. A stamp with a little girl that she's popped out it up and then some little flowers that look like it's part of it. And then she's got a separation and she drew some pen in here that looks like it's almost been sewn back together. Very cool. All right, so here's another one. This feels like fabric. It's really fun. Uh, Susan Davidson in 16. And then she's got this little lacy thing in here. So she's done a whole bunch of these little what I would call it quilting things along here. You can see that so she's got this fabric. I think she's dyed it or something. And then she's added these little triangles all on the edges here. Rise above yourself, the doily, and then these little quilted things that she's put in there. Very fun. Oh, I know these are the Prima Girls. All right, Michelle Russabel. This was done in 17. This was done in August of 17. And then I think the rest of the book is pretty, oh no, there's one more. I'm not done yet. Um, so we've got a very blue background, lots of good stenciling action with like a, a really good quality paste. It reminds me of the Prima paste with like a flower stencil. And then it's got some glitteriness happening on there. And then she is stamped, watercolored, and cut out all of these girls, which is pretty fun. And then we have this one here. This one doesn't have a name. So it says, and then there was no color that made her as happy as blue because blue was her favorite shade of yellow. 
So that's kind of fun. Okay, so another one where we cut out and glued in, and she has just done a whole series of really cool shapes. So she's done all the watercoloring. It looks a lot like watercoloring. She's done lots of doodling of all these twirls and things. I don't think they're stamps. I think she's this on her own. And then she's also die cutted. So these pieces here have been die cutted out. The butterflies, these ones, here's another one that she's die cut or can cut out another swirl and then she's added some more swirl patterns it could have been a stencil that she went around but she's done some doodling on here as well like this is all doodly stuff very very cool So thanks so much for stopping by and checking out all the fun pages, including my new addition to the book. You saw a whole bunch of close-up video pictures, and now it's going to be some close-up pictures of my section. Thanks so much for stopping by. Please subscribe and have fun when you art journal. Don't just think about it. I mean, just do what you like. Have a blast with it. There is no rhyme or reason. Everybody is different. Everybody does their own thing. And this is my take. So have a great day. Please subscribe. Bye-bye.